Hey, 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 Glitch Text. This is Captain Yeet here for you for another Glitch Text episode review. This is going to be season two, episode eight, titled Settling the Score. So, let's get into it. So, this episode starts off with a little montage of the Joystick Junior Arcade, just random kids running around the arcade, eating pizza, playing games, just a random montage of them just having fun in the arcade. Then we see two people walk in the front door. And they're walking in like, like they're big time. <laughs> they're walking in like they're big time. These are the two people that I'm talking about. Oof. Okay, I got I get the right shot of it. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a really split second scene. But these are the two people. The older brother right here and the younger brother. Their names are Ryu and Mike. It's kind of funny how we find out Mike's name because Five, just later on in the episode, just randomly knows it. And then... At the very end, he officially tells us his name is Mike. But, you know, Five, he didn't know that yet. So I was like, how did he know? But uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, they walk in like they're big time. And then we pan over to Miko and Five. And Miko was playing those uh, cl that claw game. When you know, you got to get the claw, pick up the plussy. Those are really hard games or whatever's inside of it. She's playing the claw game. And she just picked up the mascot of Hanobi, the little bee. We don't really get to see the... Mask of Hanobi really like that. And it's not really plastered anywhere either. Cause it's not like on the it's not on the logo. It's not like on walls in the store. It's really only in like the first episode and like randomly mentioned here and there. But that is the mascot of Hanobi that be. But it's not really, you know, like out there like that. Like you really wouldn't know. Anyway, <laughs> she has the bee in her hand and five her, okay Miko, you got it. Just one more little like nudge on the joystick. Now it's up to the claw gods. <laughs> and Miko's like, I got it. I got it. And then these two guys, Ryu and Mike, walk past Miko and Five. And then Ryu goes, look at this girl. She's totally finna choke. Miko turns around like, who said that? And she slaps the joystick. It goes crazy. Drops the B. No! <laughs> they obviously are really mad. Well, Miko's a bit more mad. But Five's like, hey, hey, hey. I know what you need. You just need to spend your tickets on some prizes. Come on, Miko, let's go. So he goes, all right, all right, let's do that. And it was like a really nice, uh, nice screen shot right here when he just pulls out the coin. I mean, not the coin, the tickets. He's like, come on, let's go. All right, they got their little prizes for the tickets and five got a 15 ticket whistle. He blows into it, he goes, and it's already broken. Hey, that's, uh, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, Miko says, hey, let's go out before we get, I mean, not go out. Oh, no, yeah, she, she says, let's go out of the arcade. <laughs> That's good. Let's go out of the arcade so we can go get some good Glix text missing before all the good ones get taken up. Five goes, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. But first, let's go ahead and spend the rest of our gamer cred. They have, like, it's like Dave and Buster. Well, they used to do, I forgot how they used to do it in Dave and Buster's, but it's different now. But, you know, you, uh, you get your card from Dave and Buster's and you only have so many points so you can play games. You know, they, they have to do that. Basically, like Dave and Buster's. And we're going around, clicking, ran playing random games. This is a really nice little montage. Then we cut over to Miko playing another random game. And Five comes over. He goes, hey, that's a good score, you guys. He goes, thank you. And then Ryu and Mike both walk past. And um, what he, oh yeah, Ryu says the same thing. But, you know, he says it like condescendingly. He goes, hey, nice score. She goes, what? Gets distracted. She dies. She gets mad. And then Miko's like, oh, who are those bums? And Nick's. He comes around. He goes, oh, Ryu? Oh, him and his little brother get moved in from Dabney. They mentioned it. <laughs> That's kind of cool because Dabney just got brought up last episode. Anyway, he goes, oh, him? Oh, him and his little brother just can move in here from Dabney. Yeah, they uh, got the top scores on this game, this game, and this game. And then they're like, how do you know that? He goes, well, you know, people do call me the scorekeeper. Miko's like, we don't call you that. Can you, can you start calling me that? <laughs> These two guys. And then, yeah, Ryu from Street Fighter. Yo, that's crazy. I do have a... Oof. I do have a Street Fighter 6, the case. But uh, it's not... I don't know why they put Luke on the front. But I, I'll put Ryu in the thumbnail. I'll put Ryu in the thumbnail. Yeah, just for you guys. Since since Ryu's not on the case of Street Fighter 6, I'll put Ryu right in the thumbnail for you. If I can. <laughs> There's enough room for it. I gotta make a good shot. There's enough room for it. Anyway, Nick says that he's the scorekeeper. And Miko's like, I don't know. My bad. I lost my turn of thought because I saw that. They pan over to the side. And Mike and Ryu are laughing at some guy that gets lost out of the game. And then Five is like, man, people like that give us gamers a bad name. 
Miko's like, yeah. I mean, who cares about top scores on video games just to make fun of other people? And then Nix goes, oh, yeah, speaking of scores, hey, Miko, I mean, it's just a number. We don't have to flaunt a number of a high score just to think we're better than other people. We show our skills to show people how exactly good we are at a video game, like giving a speech. And he goes, uh, Miko, and she keeps going on and on. And Nix is like, five, can she hear me? She goes, I hear you. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. She's like, I hear you. Like, what? Like, I'm giving a speech. Do you need to, like, keep interrupting me? <laughs> like, what do you want? And it turns out that Miko, her high score got hijacked. That was funny. I hear you. Like, jeez, man. Like, what? <laughs> Anyway, on the video game Sockham Rockers, her high score is completely gone. It has been replaced with the initials M-I-S. She goes, M-I-S? What kind of initials are those? This is ridiculous. And Miko gets, like, really mad. He gets, like, super mad to where she starts to float up in the sky. And there's, like, a bunch of particles floating around here, which is pretty funny. <laughs> like, she gets super mad. So many particles are uh, super bright, so you can't see Miko in the middle. Well, when it's a really bright scene, you can't really see it, but... You know, she gets really mad and books a party when she starts to float up. Anyway, like I said, she was, like, very mad about her game of score getting taken over. And the five's like, hmm, M-I-S. Who is that, Nyx? And she's like, huh, honestly, I don't know. And she goes, you call yourself the scorekeeper. And Nyx just looks down. And five was like, Miko, why are you so upset about this game of score? You just you were just doing a whole spiel about how it didn't matter and stuff. A bit of tell back on the TV. Miko mentioned that this game is kind of special to her because when she first moved here, it's not it wasn't from Daphne. I don't know. I don't think we know where Miko moved from to come here to Bailey. It wasn't Daphne. I I can't remember where. I just remember Miko this say she was the new kid in town. She didn't have a lot of friends. We know that. And this game was the only thing that gave her somewhat comfort. And nobody really like wanted to talk to her. They looked at her. And she just came to the arcade and played this game all the time. And one day she got the high score. And everybody turned around, started looking at her, praising her. Like, that's when she started to actually make friends and people started to talk to her once she got the high score of this game. And this is like a special game to her because of that. And Five is like, hmm, I understand. Come on, Miko, let's get this guy back. Woo! There was like a few outtakes for him, but I forgot exactly what he said because it was so long. And then we get the theme song. After the theme song, she f plays the game to get her high score back. And this game is basically... Dance, dance revolution where you have to like dance on the you know the floor, but it's also a fighting game. <laughs> it's a dance game mixed in with a fighting game, and the fighting game characters are kaiju monsters like Godzilla or King Kong. So that's a very weird mass up, but it's pretty good. And the song they use, can we get a montage of Miko playing the game, getting a high score back? Because it's a fighting game with the kaiju. Because you have to dance and then punch and then I'll, I'll show you guys. But the music. I'm going to put a link to the song. It's like a full version of the song. The music is nice. I really like the song they use for this game. It's like really cool. I was like, I can't play it for you. Don't want to get in trouble. But I really like this song. Just like the manga. We get two manga just This one. And then later on, Miko does it again against Mike. But man, this was pretty cool. But anyway, you know, Nix and um, Five are like, okay, Miko, get your high score, bet. Let's go. So he goes, okay. Then like the whole arcade starts watching her. And this is how it works. You have to dance on the tile, like I said around Miko's going crazy and you also have to fight so after a few dance moves she starts to punch and I'm like okay like Miko is going stupid I, I love this part where it goes uh yeah kaiju baby oh I'm okay okay this is nice this like this this was cool this was really cool I like this I really like this <laughs> this was so dope anyway Miko Got her high score back. The whole arcade is going crazy. Like, whoa, that's what I'm talking about. Woo. And then Five gives Miko a towel. She's sweating because <laughs> she was just going so stupid. Five was like, good job, Miko. It's a high score back. She goes, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They walk outside the arcade. Well, they're walking to go outside the arcade. And Five like, man, your Miko's, I mean, your gamer score is going to be there for a while. And then Ryu comes out of nowhere, bumps Miko, and says, yeah, I don't count on it. Miko gets really mad. Runs over to go hit him with five grabs. And she goes, okay, Miko, come on. Let's just go do some Glick Tech's missing. Let's so get some mine off it. So they go inside the Glick Tech car. The Glick's car. I, I, I came up with a certain name of it last episode, but I forget. The Glick's van? I forget what that came up with. I honestly forget the name I came up with it last episode. Um, There was a moment I forgot to mention that was kind of funny. 
There was a moment to where when she was explaining why this game was so special to her, she said that she wanted her grandkids to see her high score in this game because I thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, so when they get inside the car, Five's looking at all the missions that's left for today. He goes, hey, there's a go-kart one, a chomp kitty, there's a monster over here. Which one you want to go for, Miko? And Miko was like, have this like hologram open and she types in M-I-S, the initials of the high score before her, and she's scrolling and scrolling. I was like, you're trying to look for the guy that took your high score, didn't you? I mean, yeah. I mean, sorry, I just want to figure out who this guy is. And he goes, all right, but come on, keep your mind off it. Let's just go do some missing and get your mind off it. And Miko's like, okay, let's go. So they pick the go-kart. They're driving down the street. While they're driving, for less than a minute, they get a phone call from Nix. <laughs> it was so funny. They both have their eyes closed. They crisscross, leaning back. And then he answers the phone call. He goes, yo, it's Nix. The scorekeeper, what's up, Nix? Miko, I'm sorry, man. Your high score. <laughs> it was less than a minute. <laughs> like, it was less than a minute. They barely get down the street. This is like the scene right before he calls. They barely get down the street. And this guy took her high score already. Miko comes back, gets super mad. And grabs Nyx and like throws him against the wall. And she goes, who was it? Who was what? Who took my score? And then Five of Miko, Miko, you're kind of manhandling him. <laughs> she gets really mad. This scene happens. And she grabs him and just starts manhandling him. Picks him up off the ground. And Five like, Miko, Miko, please. <laughs> like, anyway, Nyx mentions that Ryu said he was going to go to... Frosty Mart for a Freezy Freeze. So they're like, okay. They go to Frosty Mart. They see Ryu and the little brother Mike get some Freezy Freeze. It was like Slexies. They get on Ryu's motorcycle thing. They drive down the street. Miko starts to follow them home. <laughs> like, they're literally tracking this guy back to his house. They eventually go inside that house. Miko parks the car to the side. Miko and Five both walk up to the door. And Five goes to ring the doorbell. But Miko's like, wait, wait, wait. I gotta get my angry face on. And she makes an angry face. And she goes, what do you think? Five's like, eh, three out of five. So she makes another one. He goes, oh, that, that's good. <laughs> and then they hear music off to the side. And somebody is playing the Rock'em Sock'em game in the garage. They have their own gigantic arcade thing of Rock'em Sockers inside the, uh, in, inside the arcade, inside the garage. Anyway, it was the funny scene where Miko's like, wait, I gotta get my mean face on. What do you think? Eh. Three out of five. Okay, how about now? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> now, another funny scene comes up. So while they're playing, well, while whoever's playing the game in here, they're getting perfects, and Miko and Five both are, well, it's a garage door. You know, they have those three big windows. They both grab the legs of one of the windows and pull themselves up and watching this. And Five is like, wow, that is so cool. They have their own arcade game in the garage and they're practicing. Miko's like, That's not cool. And Miko. I don't know if he did this intentionally or not. Probably intentionally because he was kind of mad. But see, kicks five in the side. And after she does that, he falls. And then she falls. <laughs> Which I thought that was so funny. I think it was intentionally because after five was like, yo, that's so cool. Miko kicks him in the side and they both fall. And then they start arguing about how, like, you know, that's not cool. I mean, it is kind of cool to have their own little thing. And then Mike opens up the garage door. He goes, what are you guys snooping around my house for? And then he's there like, we're not snooping. We're, we're friends with you. We just moved here. We don't have any friends. What are you guys doing? And then Mike looks at Miko. She go, I mean, I see. He goes, wait a second. You are that girl from the arcade. The one I keep wiping off the scoreboard. Why are you even breaking a sweat? Miko looks like she's finna hit a child. Because <laughs> she, she gets pretty mad the way there's fire surrounding her. And her eyes turn red. Anyway, Miko gets very mad and challenges Mike to a dance off, well, a Rock'em Sock'em tournament. And it's kind of funny because her teeth get really spiky when she says it too. It's kind of bright, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but her teeth does get really spiky right here. Ah, yeah, you can't really see it. It kind of sucks. But she challenges him to a Rock'em Sock'em's off. And the deal is who the loser cannot play Rock'em Sock'em's in the arcade and they can't play Rock'em Sock'em's anywhere. They're like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. And it's kind of funny because Ryu and uh, Five, they like stand off to the side watching this and they look unfazed. They're like, okay, 
don't know if these guys are done yet. Uh, before they actually start to play play, uh, five does check the console. It's not a console, but you know, like check the game. He goes, yeah, this is, you know, it's, it's up the code. And Mike's like, of course. But five does mention that this thing is hooked up to a 10, like, gigawatt break. I don't understand it. But it basically it's charged up to an electricity thing in the house. But it's only good for like 10 gigawatts. If it goes like 11 or 12, the game could break or something or it could glitch. But he doesn't say that, but you know, he like, plug, like you know, something could back or happen if it goes over the watt limit. And Miko's like, come on, five? I only need 10 minutes to take this guy down. And then five just looks at Miko. And then Miko's like, okay, okay, okay. I'll take it easy on the kid. And Miko gives five her glitch tech, like, bracelet for her gauntlet. Because she goes, you know, this is going to get in the way. Hold my gear. But look at five. He just looks at Miko like, come on, five? I only need 10 minutes for this guy. Uh-huh. I'll go easy. <laughs> Anyway, we got another montage of them both fighting, and they're both really good at this game. Both really good at this game. It gets to the point to where they're both at 1 XP. They both punch each other at the exact same time. It's a tie, so they got to keep it going. <laughs> they got to keep it going. I mean, look at this. I mean, this montage and the music, like the music I'm telling y'all, when y'all look at, when y'all click the link in the bottom, this music goes crazy. I love this music and just this montage of them just, you know, breaking it down, fighting each other with the kaiju bars and they just both look unfazed. This was so funny and so hype at the same time. And then like the last scene of the montage before we cut to the next thing, they both punch each other at the same time and it phases in between Miko's face and Mike's face, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, come on. Like this, this, I, come on, let's text. That's what I'm talking about. Where is season three? <laughs> I need me a season three. I need a season three. Anyway, eventually, um, Ryu and Five, they've been playing a card game like 75 times. And Five was like, okay, you, you want to go again? Ryu's like, nah, these two, pff, they're not stopping anytime soon. I'm out. I'll be back later. He gets on his moped and motorcycle thing and drives off. Five's like, all right, come on, Miko. That's like no honor in this. Let's just go. And then Miko and the kids are arguing. And then he goes, exactly. Like, how is this honorable, Miko? You're, you're dissing out insults to a kid. This is ridiculous. All the good missions are getting taken up. We need to go out there. Five and Miko, best buddies, taking on the world together. Let's go. And she goes, Five, this is important to me. Maybe you don't understand because you don't have a high school to protect yourself. Five's like, what is that supposed to mean? She goes, I mean, what is that supposed to mean? Five goes, you know what? Forget it. I'll take on a mission by myself. Miko goes, wait, Five, I didn't. Oh, whatever. And just keeps on fighting and dancing in the game. Five gets in the car. He goes, okay, bitch. Come on, give me a mission. What do you got? He goes, I'm sorry, but we don't really have any missions right now. Of course. <laughs> of course you don't. Thank you, man. And then the game that they're playing, Rock'em Soccer, goes over the watt limit and it glitches. And then we get a cold green. We first find out the code green because Phil is sleeping and that little bunny that their fists lock hard or the, the Dabney Phil took is back to Phil and a big screen pops up and it's a code green because, you know, glitches can happen in any game and any of those characters can pop out. There are gigantic monsters in games and gigantic monsters is going to be a big deal because they're gigantic. So it's like a big, I, I really liked it. I remember when I, the very first time I watched it, I was like, oh, I like that. Like when it's like a huge king, like a King Kong game, King Kong is out. They're going to have a big alert for that. Because this isn't some, some normal like, you know, oh, look, Sonic got released. You know, or like, oh, look, Mario. This is like Bowser, Donkey Kong, like, you know, like gigantic. They need all hands on deck. So every, like, we get a montage of everybody doing whatever. And then like their glitch tech thing flashes, like cold green. Oh, I, I got to go. I got to go. And the one montage I love is Bergie getting spaghetti from that Papa Mama's place. And that girl we always see working at Papa Mama. We found out her name is Blake. She goes, hey, Bergie, I uh, put in the Triceratops smash the sword you always like and gives it to Bergie. Bergie's like, oh, Blake, you complete me name. Bergie, he like comes up the car a little bit. They're both looking at each other. I was like, okay, okay, Bergie. <laughs> okay, my boy got gay, Bergie and Blake. I can see this. I can see this is nice. That was sweet. That was nice. I like this. I like this. I love it. This is nice. Anyway, Bergie gets the cold grin. He goes, huh? 
oh, this is a fist of work stuff. I got to go. And he drives off and Blake's like, huh, he's so mysterious. <laughs> that was funny, Doug. I was like, oh my goodness. Anyway, we cut to five and he got the code green. He's like, he's really excited about this. And uh, Bit, he's like, yo, this is like no joke. Cole Green is like very serious. He's like, you know, I understand, Bit. And then the two characters that Miko and Mike are playing as, obviously, because I said the game glitch, those are the two giant kaijus that's like stomping around his huge field. Um, field. 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 And his huge, like, random empty field. And, you know, Five stops his car and he looks out. He's like, Smashosaurus. You know, no, he's like, Smashosaurus. The other... Oh no, that game glitched. Like you know, this is the this is smashing, smashing. This this is like um soccer markers. That game glitched. This is bad. This is ridiculous. And all the damn glitches come out to help out too, because this is a big deal. So they need all hands on deck. Anyway, one part that kind of confused me. So while the two kaiju's are fighting, um, one of one of them, the the dinosaur one, his tail hits like a random factory and it breaks a little bit. And Phil is like, use all your Glick's Tech power, um, all your power, your Glick's Tech gauntlets to protect city property. And I was like, shouldn't they just be fighting the monsters? Like, why you want to protect city property so much? I mean, obviously, you don't want them to understand, like, know about the glitches. You don't want something to get destroyed. That makes sense. But two things happened. One, I mean, two things I thought about. One, the robot, or I think it was a dinosaur, did like a beam, and it like completely destroyed the mountain in the background. That's one. So they did it. Two, they have, they can like literally fix anything. Like this happened multiple times. A whole house got destroyed. All Mix had to do was throw a little disc down, and did a big like flash, and then everything got reset and it put back together. And they can even do that with their gauntlets, like zap something, just put right back together. Maybe the bigger it is, it's gonna be take longer, but they can still do that without having to make shields and do that. You know, you get what I'm saying? Anyway, Five is like, oh no, like you know, uh, Miko's game glitched. She has to stop playing. Let me call her. And then his uh, pocket starts ringing. He goes, oh, no, I took her thing. But for a split second, we get to see what Miko's profile picture looks like on the Glicks Tech gauntlet. It looks different on his phone and on the gauntlet. On the gauntlet, Miko's doing this. <laughs> Look at Miko's face. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Anyway, he goes, uh, anyway, he goes, okay, I'm going to have to handle this myself. So he brings out Alpha. We haven't seen Alpha in a minute. So he brings out Alpha. He starts to run alongside the monsters fighting. And all the Glick techs are talking on intercom trying to figure out what to do. Five tells them to scan for a house on the edge of the city near the highway. And then Wes does that, the Glick techs from Dabney. And he goes, huh, yeah, this Glick tech signature is coming from that house. That's pretty smart. And they also said that these glitches are supercharged because this Glicks came directly off of the power line. So they're getting even more energy than normal off of the power line. So five, like, they're connected to the power line. This would be connected directly to the house where the game is. So I just got to get towards, I mean, I just got to get on top of the uh, Kaiju monster and then talk to Miko because I have her Glick Tech Goddess, so I can't call her. So he has Alpha throw him onto the dinosaur. He climbed with the dinosaur. There was like some little hijinks happening with some birds and an egg and now there's a chicken in his head. Then he has to jump from each one. But eventually he gets up to the head of the dinosaur and there's a little hole perfectly made for his goblet. He puts it in. And a little screen pops up on the game where Miko's playing. And Five like, yo, Miko, your game glitch. Your kaijus are wrecking havoc. They're going to destroy the city. You need to stop playing. Obviously, Miko doesn't want to. Mike doesn't understand this. He just thinks this is like a little ploy to make him like, <laughs> to make him like quit. And he goes, I'm never going to quit. I will pee in my pants before I will quit this game. Five was like, okay, Miko, you're going to have to be the one to stop playing. But I can't. My high score. And he was like, you know, you said it yourself. You are more than just a number on the screen. You don't need a high score. You are Miko Kubota. You are amazing. I'm like, okay. My boy five. I ex Miko. Yeah, yeah. You already know that. I like that scene. That was sweet. Anyway, Miko starts to think about it. And she looks over to the side while she's dancing. And she sees, like, boxes. Because they just moved here. And she looks at Mike and sees her, like, kid herself. And Mike playing this game like she liked to when she was a kid. And she was like, oh, you just moved here. And he goes, yeah, what about it? He goes like, huh. So he steps off the game. Mike's win. Mike's, Mike, he wins. And then all the Glicks techs destroy the um, dinosaur and the gigantic robot. They clean it up. And then we cut back over to Miko and Mike. And Mike's like, I win. I win. You can't play some ass. I mean, um, Rock'em Soccer's anyway. I mean, anyway. And Miko's like, yeah. 
You got game, kid. Honestly, I think I played enough for a lifetime. I'm out. She starts to walk out. Mike's like, yeah, you better. Um, but hey, I mean, if, if you ever want to come back and play, it's whatever. And she goes, yeah, so what's your name, kid? And she, he's like, Mike. Or like That's when he says it. And he, she goes, yeah, so I'll come back and play. And he goes, yeah, because you suck. And he walks in the, I mean, Miko walks back in the van. And then Mike smiles. Goes, now he got a friend now. Like, that was sweet. And Miko slams her face on, like, the console. She goes, Miko, sorry. It, like, just, <laughs> like, does this. I was like, okay, I know. Thank you, man. Boom. Ow. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I was thinking maybe this might be the thumbnail, this scene. Or maybe when Miko sets up and we get a nice scene of them both just sitting back to back. Well, not back to back, but side to side on the chairs. That might be the thumbnail. Anyway, um, the last, the very last scene is Miko was like, I never did find out that kid's last name. And then Five was like, well, you'll probably see him around the arcade and stuff. You'll find out then. And then they drive off, and then we see the mailbox, and his name, his last name is Simmons, Mike Simmons. So S-I-M is his last name. Well, the first three letters of his last name. Okay, that's, boom. <laughs> that's his last name. And that's the episode. So, ooh, actually, I can bring up a uh, story time. Uh, what's the next episode? Uh, I don't know. And uh, I just do the story time. I do have a story for Captain Yeet uh, for uh, Dang Stan for Evolution. I went to Dave and Buster's for my 15th and 16th birthday. No, it was my 14th and my 13th. I went to Dave and Buster's back to back those years for it. My fifth, well, for my 13th and 14th birthday. And one of those years, I forgot which one. I think it was my 14th one. Me and my friend and David Buster are walking around to see what game we should play. And we see some guy walking over to uh, Dance of Revolution. It's a big guy. We're like, what is he doing? He, he's really going to play that game? Walks over to the game, takes off his jacket, not his shirt, picks a song. We're like, oh, I guess he's playing that. And this guy picks the fastest song in the universe. And he puts both his hands on like the bars behind him. And he's going crazy on the panels, and he's hitting every single one. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the song is going fast. And me and my friend are like, yo, what the? Like, we look at each other like, this guy's crazy. He must be practicing every day. <laughs> like, that That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I like that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you guys a trick. That trick I found out on the keyboard about Miko. When? Next episode, though. Next episode, because it's already 27 minutes. So. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. I thank you all for watching. I thank you all for ever being wonderful human beings. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right.